Hey everybody, it's Obnoxious Rhinoceros. Thanks for listening in. You know, uh, I almost didn't record this video this week. And, and in fact, that's not even true. I, I did record a video and then I made an effort to delete it. Or if not delete it, then I abandoned it. And in fact, thought seriously about abandoning making these videos as part of my practice, my cartooning practice altogether. And clearly today I've thought better of that. I'm in a better mood today. Uh, I, I guess I was feeling a little bit existential yesterday about why do I even draw cartoons? Why would I bother to make these videos when I only have an audience of a certain size? And then I realized that it doesn't matter what size the audience is. It doesn't matter who listens to these videos, even if it's only one person, which would probably be my mom. Hey, mom, I love you. Uh, really, these videos are for me. These are my time to reflect on the week that's passed. It's my time to reflect on the creative process, the art that I've made. And, you know, if you start asking yourself, why are you creating something? Why are you making art? Then I think you're undermining really what it serves. I, I don't think there is any real good reason to make art other than it fulfills, I think, a human need. It, it creates something to leave in your wake that might be one of the most important reasons to do it I like to scroll through my Instagram feed now that I've been doing these most days for the last five months it's a joy to see what I've left behind not just that there's a product there you know something to show for my time but also it's an expression of how I see the world, how I interact with the world. It's something that my children can look at. It's a it's a insight into my brain and my worldview and therefore my specific experience in this life, which is sort of fascinating to think of we're all given one unique perspective to this composite world that's filled with so many people uh, no one's going to look at the world exactly the way that you do and I think it's easy to forget sometimes that not everyone sees the world the way you do or perhaps sometimes we're so clearly face to face with people who see the world so differently from us that we can't understand how they even got there. I don't know what that has to do with anything except for the fact that I do think that when you can share art, because art is a series of decisions. That's all it is. I, I watch these cartoons that I've drawn unfold, and and each movement is a decision. Every every you know every line, every color, how it comes together, the words that I use in the cartoons, they're all decisions, and those decisions are all an expression of the algorithm. If you'll forgive me, I believe that we're all algorithms. The algorithm that I have that brings information in and puts it out. And I think, and here's what I'm getting at, when we expose ourselves to other people's art, whether it be illustrations or paintings or music or films or essays or novels, then we are exploring the algorithm of the creator we're, we're seeing the world through 
their point of view, but more than just their point of view, we're experiencing the process that they have that reads the world from their point of view, processes it, and expresses it back out. And when done right, once our algorithms, once we ourselves have experienced somebody else's art, then we are forever changed, if not noticeably or significantly changed. Our course through life has been slightly altered. And that's a powerful thing. That's a powerful thing. That's enough of why we do this. I find myself every week trying to justify why I do it. When the truth is, I just get joy from it. I like to see people interact with the cartoons. I like to see them comment. It's gratifying when people like them and when new people follow. Um... I think more than that is gratifying to look back and see the work I've done. I had a conversation with my wife just yesterday about whether, you know, when we do something, are we are we doing it to satisfy our requirement or are we doing it to become better, to make it the best we can? And in many ways, you know, you don't you don't do something like this to just satisfy a requirement. There is no requirement that I draw a cartoon and post it on the internet uh, most days. But part of the idea I had in my head when I started doing these daily was that it would force me to draw things that I'd never considered drawing before. Uh, it would f force me to create compositions that uh, might be difficult, um, but I feel compelled to do them in honor or to service the idea that, that someone's brought to me. And in that way, I think with each illustration, I'm getting better. And uh, I was online this morning looking at the work of some cartoonists that I really admire, cartoonists who I've, have had the opportunity to publish graphic novels or books or, or uh, you find a large audience for their work and just how painstaking that type of work is and how much devotion that they have to have to their craft. So one of my goals, candidly, now that I'm being honest, is to build a body of work to demonstrate my commitment to it, to learn what there is to learn from it uh, and to uh, build my skill to the point where I feel comfortable putting together a, a children's book or a graphic novel or something, a larger work of art that would speak to the way I feel about the world and how I feel about the time I've spent here. And there is some joy in thinking that if I do it right it might have an impact on somebody else and become part of their experience and maybe in that way we can almost live forever. <laughs>